If you want to lose weight, how quickly should you do it? On the one hand, the faster you lose weight, the quicker you can get the process over with. But on the other hand, if you lose weight too quickly, you run the risk of losing excessive lean body mass, which as we discussed in the last video, may make you more likely to gain the weight back in the long run. So what is an ideal rate of weight loss? That is what we are going to explore in this video. For the purpose of this video, I will use the terms fat-free mass and lean body mass interchangeably. If you are curious, I have listed the differences on my right. Before we get to what the literature suggests regarding rates of weight loss, there are a couple of key things to keep in mind that will help you better understand the weight loss process and how to interpret the data shown in the rest of this video. First, adipose tissue, which is your body fat, actually contains a fat-free component. It is unclear how variable this is between people, but it is estimated that this accounts for around 15%, such that if you lose 100 pounds of fatty tissue, about 85 pounds of this will be actual fat, and 15 pounds will be fat-free mass. This fat-free component is distinct from skeletal muscle and other organ tissue, and likely is not something you can influence. Thus, we do not really need to worry about this. However, when seeing the data in the rest of this video, you can keep this in mind, as it is expected that you will lose a small amount of fat-free mass when losing body fat. Anytime you start dieting in some way to lose weight, you may lose several pounds rapidly due to a loss of glycogen, salt, and associated water. Glycogen is a storage form of carbohydrate, and when you enter a caloric deficit, your body will use up some of this as a source of energy. It is stored with water, so you will lose water weight as a result. Additionally, many people decrease their sodium intake when they begin to diet, and this also can lead to a loss of water weight. Thus, it is not unreasonable for people to lose 5 pounds of weight within a few days of starting a diet, just from glycogen, salt, and water loss, even if they are not losing any fat during this time. This isn't the fat-free mass we are concerned about, and thus you do not need to worry about this. However, there are two key points to keep in mind. One, you should likely exclude the first several days or even the first week of weight loss when you are determining how quickly you are losing weight, as your results will be influenced by the loss of water weight. That is not very consequential. Two, when you see the data in the rest of this video, keep in mind that some of the fat-free mass loss will include water weight, and thus the actual fat-free mass loss that is stated in many studies will be overestimated with respect to the fat-free mass that we care about. Now let's look at what the data suggests. There are a few relevant review articles worth discussing. A 2019 review evaluated the impact of the rate of weight loss on lean body mass loss. You can see the details on my right, but the key points are that this review included over 40 studies of people with elevated BMIs who engaged in dietary interventions without an exercise component. The average rate of weight loss was 0.86% of their body weight weekly, and the rate of weight loss was not associated with the amount of fat-free mass loss. Thus, this analysis implies you can lose at least 0.8% of your body weight weekly without influencing lean body mass loss, even without an exercise component, but it is important to keep in mind that the overall weight loss was relatively modest at 10 kilograms on average. Moving to 2021, a systematic review and meta-analysis was published that evaluated the impact of different rates of weight loss via dietary interventions on resulting body composition. Here, seven studies were included that directly compared slower to faster rates of weight loss with similar total amounts of lost weight. All of these studies were included in a more recently published narrative review that I will go through in detail next, but the authors here found a slight benefit for body fat loss with slower weight loss by about one kilogram over the duration of the studies, while the faster weight loss groups lost a non-statistically significant one kilogram greater amount of fat-free mass. Even more recently, a 2022 narrative review included the seven studies in the prior review plus an additional six studies, or 13 in total that compared different rates of weight loss while achieving similar total amounts of lost weight. Some of these studies included bariatric surgery components, athletes, or did not assess body composition, so we will ignore those studies for the purpose of this video, leaving eight to consider. These eight studies included people with overweight or obesity undergoing dietary interventions without rigorous exercise components. You can see results from each of these studies in the table I have included on the screen, which depicts the rate of weight loss per week, the percentage of body weight lost weekly, the amount of fat and fat-free mass lost by the end of each intervention, what percent of the weight loss came from fat-free mass, and the difference in the total amount of fat-free mass lost between the faster and slower weight loss groups. 
By the end of the intervention, all of the studies found that the faster weight loss groups lost greater amounts of fat-free mass, but it's possible some of this was due to greater water weight loss. Indeed, two of the studies additionally measured body composition after a one-month weight stabilization phase after the weight loss intervention ended, and both of these found a greater increase in fat-free mass in the faster weight loss groups. In fact, in one of the two studies, the slower weight loss group had actually lost greater amounts of fat-free mass after this weight stabilization period ended. Thus, it seems that the faster weight loss groups do lose more fat-free mass, but the significance of this decreases after one month of weight stabilization. Additionally, almost all of the slower weight loss groups lost no more than around the theoretically expected value of 15% fat-free mass loss, and this would likely include a small amount of water and glycogen loss. As all but one of the faster weight loss groups lost greater than 1% of their body weight per week, and the slower weight loss groups mostly lost less than 1% of their body weight per week, it seems you should be able to lose close to 1% of your body weight per week while maintaining the majority of your lean body mass, which is similar to what was found in the first review we discussed. However, similar to the first review I showed, most of these interventions did not result in greater than 10 kilograms of weight loss, so it is unclear how things may change beyond this point. Lastly, a separate 2022 meta-analysis assessed the impact of varying levels of caloric restriction on lean body mass gain or loss when performing resistance training. This is in contrast to the prior reviews that did not include resistance training interventions. The authors here only found seven trials that compared these head to head, so they also found studies that employed resistance training with an energy deficit and then attempted to find other studies with similar characteristics to serve as control groups, yielding an additional 25 interventions. If you recall from one of my prior videos, when eating in a caloric deficit, your metabolism may change, and this can influence your rate of weight loss. The authors attempted to get around this limitation by quantifying the energy deficit from the actual changes in body fat that each study demonstrated. One downside to this approach is that it is dependent on the accuracy of the body composition analysis, so any error with this would have impacted the estimated energy deficit. When pulling all of the results together, the authors found that with a caloric deficit of roughly 500 calories per day, there was no net change in lean body mass. There are a few caveats to consider. First, the authors did not assess protein intake as this was not readily reported in the various studies, and it is known that protein intake can influence lean body mass retention when losing body weight. Second, the study duration did not impact the lean body mass change over time, even in the control groups that did not engage in an energy deficit. As almost all studies included people without significant resistance training experience, I would have expected studies of longer duration to achieve greater increases in lean body mass. This implies either the resistance training programs were not very effective or the body composition analysis methods were not sensitive enough to detect relatively small changes in lean body mass. Third, while the prior review I discussed indicated with two studies that a weight stabilization period after weight loss will yield a rebound in lean body mass, this was not accounted for in any way in this analysis. For these reasons, I think a 500 calorie deficit, which corresponds to roughly one pound of fat loss per week, represents the lower bound for what people starting with overweight and obesity can safely aim for when attempting to lose weight while maintaining their lean body mass. Overall, there are a lack of trials employing effective resistance training programs with elevated protein intake that compare the impact of different rates of weight loss on lean body mass loss. The data that is available suggests that you can likely lose close to 1% of your body weight weekly without losing excessive lean body mass, even without higher protein consumption and an effective resistance training regimen. Thus, I generally recommend for people with overweight and obesity that you can aim for 1% body weight loss per week if you consistently follow a progressive resistance training program and consume sufficient protein intake. As a brief example, if you currently weigh 300 pounds and want to start losing weight, you can alter your diet accordingly, ignore the first week of weight loss for the reasons discussed earlier, and then starting in the second week, aim to lose around 3 pounds a week. As you lose greater amounts of weight, you will want to decrease your rate of weekly weight loss so that it remains at 1% of your new lower body weight. You can of course lose weight less quickly than this, and if that is what allows you to stay consistent in progressing towards your goals, then slower weight loss may be ideal for you. Since I mentioned two other components to maintaining your lean body mass are consuming sufficient protein and resistance training, we will start discussing how much protein you should consume when attempting to lose weight in the next video. I hope you guys found this video informative, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.